<clears throat> okay, great. So I, um, when I got invited to do this, I, I thought one of the things, is there a problem? I'm zipped up. <clears throat> when I got invited to do this, one of the things that I was, uh, you know, immediately struck by is how this is really a perfect topic for me. Because one of the things that I've always said about myself is that I'm a pathological optimist. Uh, I'm sure Dan Ariely could do a whole study on my way of thinking because it's completely insane. Um, but it's quite cheerful, actually, in the end. So when reporters say to me, you know, what is the biggest threat to Wikipedia? Threat? I have no idea. I can't think of that at all. What, was, what were the biggest problems you had to overcome? I don't really remember any problems. It all seemed to go pretty well. Um, so for me, you ask me, a recipe for a better tomorrow, oh, I'm your guy. It may not make much sense, but um, you, know, you might be able to pull it off. So the original idea for Wikipedia, the original vision, is for all of us to imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. And that's what we're doing. So this is uh, an enormous and very audacious goal, uh, but it's one that really captured people's imagination. Uh, we started 10 years ago, uh, and obviously we've come a long way since then. Uh, what I used to say to people is, how many people here uh, have used Wikipedia? Well, now I just do this for exercise. Um, the real question, how many people have edited Wikipedia? That's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. Not as good as when I speak to college students in India, mind you, uh, but it's still quite good. So Wikipedia has had this enormous uh, impact on the world, but when I think about it in terms of how can I take some of the things that I've learned from the world of Wikipedia, from the Wikipedia community, and think about recipe for a better tomorrow. Uh, and so some of the principles that we uh, have come up with and that we live by in the Wikipedia world I think are quite important and something that we should all reflect on. So one of the most important principles for Wikipedia is assume good faith. So assume good faith means you're in Wikipedia, you're making some change, you're, you're making some edits, you see another person, they're making edits, and they're doing something wrong. We won't specify exactly what it is they're doing wrong, but they're doing something wrong. And you basically have two choices about how to understand their behavior. You can either assume that they're malicious, evil, horrible, idiotic, stupid, or you can assume good faith and say, mm, I think what they're doing is wrong, but they're probably trying to do something right. And if I think about what it is they're trying to do and I approach them on that footing and say, hey, I see that you're doing this, uh, I don't necessarily agree, can you explain to me what you're doing? Often what ensues is a perfectly valid conversation. And you find out that actually, um, yes, perhaps they were doing something wrong, but they didn't realize X, Y, or Z. They didn't realize how serious the Wikipedians are, and oh my, they're very serious. Um, and so making a joke by editing a page to put in curse words is just not funny for us. And they didn't realize that, and they say, oh, actually, you know, you're right, I understand. You're trying to build an encyclopedia, and I was goofing around. I shouldn't do that. Or maybe they come in and they think, uh, oh, Wikipedia is like a blog, and so I'm supposed to go and write my opinions. Um, and, and so I'm really, really angry about this issue, so I'm going to go and p post a rant about it. And then somebody hopefully will say, actually, that's a really interesting opinion you've got. If you want to go start a blog, you know, here's a link to a blog service. But this is an encyclopedia, and we're trying to be very, very neutral. Which brings me to one of the second principles of Wikipedia that I think is very valuable in a lot of contexts. And this is the idea of neutrality, of a neutral point of view. And the idea here is there are many, many issues uh, that we know we'll never really get to full agreement on. Um, you can think of uh, you know, hundreds of them, any, any kind of topic you want, even fairly obscure ones. You'll find people have extremely adamant opinions about the names of rivers in Poland, honestly. Um, and but it, it turns out that our, our principle is, on any controversial issue, Wikipedia itself shouldn't take a stand. Instead, we should just report reliably on what people have said. And so, you know, to give, uh, you know, as we're standing here in Israel, obviously, various conflicts, Israel-Palestine, various things that have happened. And what we would try to do is, we won't say for sure what happened in some situation, but we will we'll report as accurately and faithfully as we can, we'll say, well, Yasser Arafat said this, and Errol Sharon responded with that, um, and these are some of the things that were said. So that someone who comes to the subject for the first time, and they're trying to understand, instead of getting fed one side or the other, they get enough information to actually understand a little bit better what the conflict is about. 
Now, obviously, this is always a work in progress. We've always got thousands of people working, thousands of people debating. Any particular page in Wikipedia at any particular time may not be nearly as good as we think it should be. But on the whole, it works amazingly well. And that this concept of neutrality is actually one of the ones uh, that really um, uh, brings us together. The final idea is an idea of quality. Uh, the idea that the people who are working in Wikipedia are really, really passionate that we should make it as good as we can. We should try really, really hard to make it something very, very special, something very, very good. And this is something that is very abstract. Uh, you would think, actually, that in almost any community, people would say, of course, we want to do quality work. But it turns out not to be true. Communities can be about all kinds of things, poking fun, having fun, doing this or that. Instead, we take a very serious approach. How can we make this good? How can we make this really high quality? So I think some of those principles lead us uh, to thinking about um, all kinds of issues, all kinds of projects, all kinds of communities uh, in different ways. So one of the interesting things about us, uh, Wikipedia, so through these principles, um, we've grown to be this enormous, enormous cultural uh, force. Uh, every month, over 400 million people visit the website. Uh, so this is dramatically more than uh, you know, many, many major newspapers of the world combined. Uh, we're by far the, the number one information and reference source um, in the world. So 400 million people, and strangely enough, the whole project is organized as a charity. So we're a nonprofit organization, and the way that we get money is simply through donations from the general public. Uh, we do have some major donors and some money from philanthropic foundations, but that is really uh, secondary for additional projects. The core funding of Wikipedia comes from the general public, people donating 20 or $30 on average. That is really where it comes from. So this is really something remarkable to think about. Everything you see on the website, everything that is on the front page of the website even, is not selected by anyone in the office. It's all done by volunteers. And all the funding comes by people who volunteer to give it. So it's really a mass community movement to bring this amazing uh, work to everyone. And I, I just think it's, it's phenomenal. It's amazing uh, for me as, uh, you know, uh, you, you may call me the leader of the project, but actually um, it's, it's the community that leads me. Uh, this is very important. I'm, I'm a, some kind of spokesperson because people, they have to have somebody come up on stage. But really it's about all those people out there who've come together and who share this common vision, this idea of a free encyclopedia for everybody. If we put this into the context of some of the events that are going on in the world, um, uh, Martin Sorrell mentioned earlier uh, this idea that in addition to the Twitter revolution, Facebook revolution, there's actually something deeper going on. And he talked about some of the deeper causes uh, for these kinds of, of, of uprisings. But what I want to think about, what I want us to talk about and think about, uh, and I think this should be on everybody's agenda to think about, it's one thing to go out in the streets and demand a change and demand a better government. And sometimes you're successful. Um, this is nothing new. We've had popular uprisings for years, although, I mean, for centuries. Uh, although now it's a, you can do it much faster and, and you can do it more efficiently in certain ways. But what do you do next? This is the important piece. The important piece of the puzzle is what do you do next? So now you've toppled your dictator. And so what do we need to be sure that the young people who are going out in the streets and protesting, um, that there is a groundwork being laid? And what is that groundwork? That groundwork is a deep knowledge of history, a deep knowledge of politics, a deep knowledge of economics. For people to start thinking about social systems, social institutions, what are the things that we need in a society to make sure that at the end of the day, individual rights are protected, that we have peace, that we have safety? And what are the ideas that don't work? What are the ideas that lead to oppression, tyranny? Uh, and how do we organize our institutions to protect ourselves um, in, in all those different ways? And I think for this, um, we need to think very broadly about how do we harness these technologies for broad education? How do we get people interested in reading about these things? How do we get people to think about, OK, yes, I know it's really not a good thing that my country has a dictator and that we're all very poor. We think now we, we know how to get rid of them, but then what comes next? How do we build the next stage? And I think that's something that's very, very important. So finally, uh, I just want to think about that in the context of what comes next. What comes next for many, many places. And I think one of the most important places to think about is China. Because China is going to deal with these same issues in a very, very big, very, very deep way. Um, and it's very difficult to predict whether this is going to happen next year or five years or 15 years from now. 
However, there is an enormous wave of change going across China, fueled in part by people becoming more aware of their ability to make change. One of the things that's really interesting, when I um, have visited with the uh, minister of the State Council Information Office uh, in China, he brags to me that there are over 2 billion blogs, or not 2 billion, 2 million blogs in China. So China does have a strong blogging culture. And in fact, many of these blogs, one of the things that, in varying degrees, uh, that they have been allowing is criticism of local officials for corruption. So why does this happen? Well, one of the reasons this happened is, of course, the central government of China um, has no interest in local corruption. There's no benefit to them if there's a corrupt local official. And this is, proves to be quite an effective way of policing it, of getting people involved, um, and they're happy about that. But what's really interesting is there's a whole generation of bloggers coming up, a whole generation of people who see, hey, we complained about this corrupt local official and he was gone. At what point do they realize, actually, we should complain about the central government? It's time for us to think about that. And so I think as we look at this, these, these technologies, we're not going to turn back the clock. Um, everything is changing everywhere, in every place around the world, where there's corruption, where there's tyranny, where there's oppression, where there's authoritarianism, there is now the opportunity for people to make a change. But I suppose the most important message I have is that when we go back and we think about these principles, uh, these principles of assumed good faith, of neutrality, of quality work, they're very, very important. They're important values that we need to make sure we're spreading through the internet, make sure we're spreading through the culture, so that when we have young people who are, who are having an uprising, that it just doesn't become an out-of-control riot, that it just doesn't become a chance for topple the old dictator so that his cronies can come up and take over again. Instead, we need to think about moving society forward in a very thoughtful way, in a very constructive way, and that really takes a lot of discussion, a lot of dialogue, a lot of debate. And we need to make sure that we're ha having and building spaces and places for that kind of dialogue and debate to happen. So to sum up, uh, my recipe for a better tomorrow is to think about social innovation in addition to technical innovation. Many, many times people report on Wikipedia in the press. It's a website, so we, obviously we should write about it in the technology section of the newspaper. I think this is um, a, bit, a bit out of step. It's a bit mistaken. In fact, Wikipedia is a social innovation, not a technical innovation. All of the technology to create Wikipedia existed six years before I started Wikipedia. You know, web browser, web server, the idea of a wiki, all of these things already existed. Instead, the, the social innovation of Wikipedia um, has to do with these principles of organization, these principles of values within a community to drive towards quality, to build something together that we think is sustainable and positive. And so that's my recipe for the future. I think we need to spread this in all kinds of areas. Thank you.